Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Resynth in Reaper. Now, the Resynth effects plugin or virtual instrument plugin is actually a very simple piece of software. But if we take the time to learn it and get creative with it, it can actually be quite powerful, as you'll see. Now, to put it on a track, we could do it this way create a new track. Set up our MIDI input for our keyboard, turn on monitoring, and then go into record. But a quicker way of doing this is to go to the track menu up here and choose insert virtual instrument on new track. That's going to open up this dialog that already points to our instrument plugins. Then we can go down and choose resynth. It automatically creates that plugin on a new track with the MIDI input already set up, all MIDI inputs, all channels, monitoring turned on, and it's in record. So if I play my MIDI keyboard, we're gonna hear the resynth plugin. Now by default, it's just a simple sine wave, and it doesn't come with any presets. So you kind of have to create your own. We can go down over here and add different waves, to create new ones. If I bring this up, it'll be more of a square wave. And if I move it all the way, it's just a square wave. Or back to the left for a sine wave. We could adjust the pulse width with this control here. Let's bring this back up and move this over. We could also bring in a sawtooth wave. And finally, a triangle wave. And any blend of any of them. Now down over here, we could add an extra sine wave and blend it in with the first one. Now, if we just blend it in this way, we're not gonna hear a difference because it's the same sound, but we could use this right here to change the pitch of the second one. If I fine tune it by holding the control on the PC or command of the Mac, we can make very small steps like five or 10, and then blend it in with the original. Notice how it wavers. Let's bring it up more. Creating a thicker sound. Now we can also blend this sine wave into other waves. So you can go to our sawtooth wave, bring it all the way up, and set the tuning to minus 1200. That's gonna create a lower octave for a sine wave against a sawtooth wave. Check it out. for creating deeper bass sounds. We'll go up an octave at plus 1200 and blend in a higher sine wave. And you do the same thing with just sine waves. making it sound more like an organ. Now to thicken this up even more, let's put this back to normal and bring up our sawtooth. And we can duplicate the plugin. Copy it, paste it, and then take the second one and bring it down an octave. 
minus 1200. And we can blend that octave with the volume on the second plugin. We'll bring it up an octave. Pretty cool. Another thing we could do with it was delete this one and copy and paste it again and go back to the first one, go to our plugin pin connector and turn off the right one on the first one and the left one on the second one. So now we created a stereo synth, which is gonna sound mono right now, unless we change something about the second one. Let's change the tuning a bit. We have a stereo synth. Or we could change the waveform. Or even the pitch. Bring down an octave. Pretty cool. Now let's go back to one plugin, put it back in the middle. Now, before I show you some really cool creative ideas, let's check out the ADSR our attack, decay, sustain, and release. The attack decides how quickly the sound comes in. If we go really fast with our sine wave, it almost has a click. But if we go a bit slower, it removes that click. And sounds smoother. But if we go even slower, the sound fades in. And if we put it on a sawtooth, it sounds like this. Now the decay setting only matters if we lower the sustain. This is the time that it takes for the attack to go down to the volume of the sustain. So if we leave it at zero, it's not gonna make a difference. But if we bring it down a whole bunch, and make this pretty quick, it's gonna create very staccato sounds. As the attack is much louder than the sustain. And how quick it gets there is the setting right here. Let's put these back to the default. And finally, we have the release. This is what happens when we let go of the key. When it's fast like this, we're not gonna hear sound when we let go. It's very quick, like a synth. But if we bring it up higher, it's gonna play longer. Like bells. We're gonna sustain down a bit. I'm letting go of the note very quickly, but it's holding on for this length. Let's put this all back to the default, and now let's get creative. Besides duplicating the plugin many times, we can also modulate it using parameter modulation. So let's start off with a square wave and let's modulate the pulse width as I'm playing. Let's click this right here, go to the parameter menu and choose parameter modulation. Then we'll turn on the LFO and see it's modulating right now. Let's make it slower and not go as far using our strength and the baseline. So it varies the width as we're playing. Let's add another one to the square mix. 
click on it, parameter modulation, LFO, let's adjust the speed, the baseline, and the strength. So this is now moving to faster. Let's do the same thing with the sawtooth. Use an LFO, just the strength, the baseline shift, and the speed. Make the attack slower. So the sound can change over time. Let's get rid of all this and add an EQ instead. Put this back to a sawtooth, add an EQ right here. We'll add the re-EQ. We'll get rid of all the bands except for one. And we'll make that a low pass filter. Bring up the bandwidth and hear what this sounds like. So we can completely change the sound using an EQ or a filter. But I think it's even more interesting if we modulate this. Just click on it, parameter modulation, LFO, adjust the strength and the baseline value and the speed. Pretty cool. But we could also do is instead of modulating it with an LFO, we could use the signal. Let's turn this one off. Choose the audio signal right here. And now the sound of the synth is going to affect the EQ. So adjust the minimum volume and the maximum volume to move the filter. Let's change this to one and two, and let's hear it. We can adjust it with the max volume. And again, just the attack, be slower. or faster. And we could also reverse the way the filter moves. Right now it's unfiltering as you play it. But we can go the other way by choosing negative and readjusting it with the bass line to create staccato sounds. I think you get the idea. We could do this with so many different plugins. We could add delays, reverbs, anything you want to get much more creative with this very simple synth or plugin. But that's the basics of using the resynth. I hope you learned something. Hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.